Okay. Hello, everyone. Samantha here. I pray all is well with you. This is a Berean chat video. And I am going to be sharing some scriptures on diligence. Here are the definitions for diligence and diligent. From a scripture writing plan that I printed off of Pinterest. It's called, it's from www.thediligentwoman.com. And, um... I'm going to, again, read the scriptures from here. Um, it's 31 scriptures from day one to day 31. Um, I'm Please note, this is not a teaching. This is reading scripture. Again, this is not a teaching. It's reading. I'm going to be using my um, laptop to navigate to the scriptures because it's going to take me a while. If I just use, um, you know, my Bible here to the left of me. I pulled it out just in case my um, laptop was going to take a, um, some time to load. But it seemed like it uploaded um, quicker than I thought. So, yeah, it's just easier. And if I decide that I want to go to another translation, it would just be easier to do so um, using my laptop. Um, there was something else I wanted to say. Yeah, okay, so um, I am not going to be doing any exegesis of the text. So I am not teaching through these scriptures. I am reading these scriptures. So, um, you know, it may, need, it may need to be, if you're listening to this, to get the context, you may have to go back and read the entire chapter or the verses before and after, the uh, only way I will do that, except the Lord placed it on my heart to do it as I am in the process of reading. Um, but I'm probably going to be marking where I need to go back to get um, further understanding of the verse <clears throat> or the cluster of verses in the event that, you know, um, I can't understand it as a standalone. Um, some of these are verses from the Proverbs so, um, they may be standalones, like what's right, what's wrong. Um, so it'll be easy to understand, of course, with the Holy Spirit helping us as we read. But some of them, you may need to get the context of it. Um, yeah, see, the one on health, they have a lot of verses in the Proverbs. But, um, not this one on diligence, but this is the one that's on my heart to read. So, I'm going to go ahead and read it. Right now, I'm just navigating to Google so I can get, um, I think I'm going to get a Bible Hub. Because I like reading, um, from Bible Hub. There's so many translations if you can't understand the King James. And you can, um, also look up the meaning of some words if need be. But, um, so... <clears throat> That's taking some time. So the first, so this again, diligence. The theme is diligence, scripture writing plan. And let's go until that loads. It's still loaded. Um, oh, no, there it goes. It came up, but then it was taking some time to go to Chrome. And if this thing keeps beeping like this, I try to take off these notifications. I don't know. I cannot stand that. I took, you know what, y'all? I'm going to have to just. Because I'm not going to be dealing with this. I'm serious. I do not like that bling bling, whatever that notification sound. So Exodus, let me put it, Exodus 15, 26. Okay. <clears throat> Exodus 15, 26. Okay, all right, so you can read the verses before and after, like I said, if you want to get greater context, but I'm going to go ahead and read the verses. Exodus 15, 26, and said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. 
So that was Exodus 15, 26. Four. So the next one is Deuteronomy 4, 7 through 9. Okay. Okay. For what nation is there so great who have God so nigh unto them? As the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for. And what nation is there so great that have statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law, which I set before you this day? Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life, but teach them thy sons and thy sons. Of course, we know there's a context for that, but we can still get something out of that. Because God is near to us as Christians. He is in us. He lives in us. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Then there's Deuteronomy 6, 5 through 12. The word, right? Okay. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them. When thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. And it shall be, when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land, which he swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not, and houses full of all good things, <coughs> excuse me, which thou fillest not, and wells dig, which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full, then beware, lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Wow. So even reading that just makes me think like to be diligent to serve the Lord. So far, everything is pointing to that, to hearken unto God and his ways. Next one is Deuteronomy 6.17. Um, hold on one second. Deuteronomy. I guess I can stay on Bible Gateway. That's where I'm on now. Just go on the search box. Ye shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies and his statutes which he commanded thee. Mm, diligent, diligence. 19.15. Deuteronomy 19.15. Fifteen through twenty-one. Okay. One witness not, shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin, and any sin that he sinneth. At the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. If a false witness rise up against any man to testify against him that which is wrong, then both the men between whom the controversy is shall stand before the Lord, before the priests and the judges which shall be in those days. And the judges, judges shall make diligent inquisition. And behold, if the witness be a false witness and have testified falsely against his brother, then shall you do unto him as he had thought to have done unto his brother. So shall thou put the evil away from among you, and those which remain shall hear and fear, and shall henceforth commit no more any such evil among you, 
and thine eyes shall not pity, but life shall go for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. And this is an Old Testament verse, and we know Jesus says, love thine enemies, and um, bless those that curse you. However, we can see God is a God that wishes for us to make diligent inquisition. That's what stood out to me there. Again, you can read the entire chapter to get the context. But that's what I got out of that so far. Um, and we know that if you read the old, the New Testament, we know God doesn't want us to bear false witness. We have to be diligent in <coughs> our matters. Um, yeah. Instead of accusing someone of something, you know, make diligent inquisition. I got that. I, I think I really needed to read that. Sometimes we we'll up in our head about situations and about people and God's like, you're so wrong. <laughs> you're so wrong. Find out the truth. So that I really needed to read that. Deuteronomy 24, 8 through 9. Take heed in the plague of leprosy that thou observe diligently, and do according to all that the priests, the Levites, shall teach you, as I commanded them, so ye shall observe to do. Remember what the Lord thy God did unto Miriam by the way, after that you will come forth out of Egypt. So, you know, um, of course they had to um, um, observe certain rules and regulations that God had established, and in terms of this whole plague of leprosy, what he would have to do, um, he or she who was plagued with leprosy to get rid of it and um, so forth and so on. So again, read the context of that. But um, again, what I could get out of it um, is that um, they did need to take heed of a particular situation and observe it diligently on what God told them to do according to all that the priests and the Levites shall teach you. So, um, you know, I can see that as um, the word of God, taking heed to the word of God, what God instructs us to do, what the Holy Spirit instructs us to do, what God and a congregation, what God instructs those pastors to do as far as that church is concerned and how we should live our life according to the word of God, not somebody trying to rule your life. That's different. Um, but general ways, general, the general, um, you know, ways, general, I, well, you know, God's ways, because there's some general statement that applies to all of us when it comes to the way that we are to live. There's specifics, and I'm talking about specifics about where you have to live, and I'm just talking about how we live, the holiness of God. Um, so let's go to Deuteronomy 24, that was 24, 8 through 9, 28, 1 through 2, 28, 1 and 2, 1 and 2. Okay, and it's, oh, let me go on, 1 through 2, and we're going to 1, 1, 2, and this. Okay, so... And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on thee, and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So there's a blessing in diligence, right? And when I think about, when you hear the word commandments, I know sometimes some people they jump automatically to the law like you're being under the law jesus says if you love me keep my commandments right and when we look at the commandments you can see how you can see the connection in the new testament thou shall not kill thou shall not steal i mean honestly like i'm not gonna say somebody's under the law because they looking at the ten commandments like you see jesus is a fulfillment he didn't do away with it he fulfilled it so if he's in us and we're following the Holy Spirit, His Spirit in us. We're going to live that out. And the heat is coming up. It's piping, y'all. Thank God for the heat. I don't want to complain. I'm not going to open the window because then it's going to be too, um, too warm. Too, um, too noisy, rather. So I'll just... 
I turn on this fan too. It'll be really loud. Ezra seven twenty three. Okay. Whatsoever is commanded by the God of heaven, let it be diligently done for the house of the God of heaven. Ooh. For why should there be wrath against the realm of the king and his sons? I'm going to put it. I want to put it. A star near there because I want to read the context of that. Who, what, what's, whatsoever is commanded by the God of heaven, let it be diligently done for the house of God of heaven. For why should they be wrath against the realm of the king and his son? So I'm going to read that. Then another time, I'm going to go back and read the context of that. That really stood out to me. Let it be diligently done for the house of God of heaven. Mm. Okay. Um, that was Ezra. Now Psalm one nineteen four, one nine four. Yes. Let's see. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Yes, keep God's precepts. Um, you know what's um, <clears throat> if when you get a chance. If you want, you can look up judgments, the word judgments, precepts, statutes, commandments. Um, there's another one too. Because they have similar meanings, but different meanings as well. Let me tell you the other few. I have them written down here. Hold on. Um, yeah, so. Hold on. Judgment, statute, precepts, testimonies, and law. Testimonies. And law. Um, those are some good words to look up in a Bible dictionary. It will help give some understanding of um, some of these verses as well. Um, and of the word overall. So now Proverbs 4.23. Proverbs 4.23. Okay. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And you know what? Um, I'm going to, when I upload this video, give the definition of diligence. But I'm going to read it here again. Diligence. The meaning, okay? Okay. Careful and persistent work or effort. Careful and persistent work of effort. So persistent is like continual, right? So let me go even to um, diligent and then diligent. It's an adjective. Having or showing care and conscientious in one's work or duties. So it's not like this shot in the dark. It's like care is involved and the person is conscientious. They are attuned. They are persistent. And so let me also look up the word persistent. All right. Continuing firmly or, or continuing to exist or endure over a prolonged period. Okay. It can also be continuing firmly or obstinately in a course of action in spite of difficulty or opposition. So persistence because we will meet opposition. We will have struggle, but that is when you know someone is diligent because they continue on despite, right? This, in spite of the difficulty, in spite of the opposition, this person is constant, continuing, nonstop, right? Determined, tenacious, persevering, resolute, purposeful, diligent, showing diligence, right? It's the Bible lets us know that God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So no matter what we're going through, God, I'm seeking you. I'm seeking you. I'm calling out to you, oh God. I'm crying to you. I'm looking to you, Father God. Yeah, diligence. So here we go. Proverbs 6, 6 to 11. Proverbs 6, 6 to 
6 through 11. Okay. Wait here. Okay. Go to the ant thou sluggard, consider her ways, and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provided her meat in the summer, and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth in thy, in thy want as an armed man. That reminds me of that scripture. If you don't work, you don't eat. Right? Unless you can't work. That's different. But if we're able, body, we have to ask God to make us ready and willing. Right, because that means that we're squandering a gift um, in our capabilities when you know he wants us to bless others with it, serve, and also it can be a way that we can earn income. So, um, you know, we have to consider the ant, that ant is wise, right? Okay, Proverbs eleven twenty seven. he that diligently seek good procureth favor, but he that seeketh mischief, it shall come unto him. So being diligent to seek good, right? Do good, not to do wrong. Those that are diligent to seek good will get favor, but if you're diligent to seek what's wrong, he's going to come back to you. Yikes. We don't want that. We want to be diligent to seek God and seek to do his will. Proverbs 13, 11, help us, Holy Ghost. Um, wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathereth by labor shall increase. Right? You know how they say you're not going to get something for nothing? You know, you got to work smart and hard for what you want, you know, um, and stop looking for a handout. That's what I get from that. Um, and you know, as I'm reading this, I'm praying because, you know, when I read the word and I see the standard, I'm like, Lord, I can't do this on my own. And it could get very frightening. I don't know, you know, if I think about where I am and, you know, my shortcoming and my flaws, I get nervous. But then a the moment I'm like, okay, God, I got to look to you, not look to myself to live this out. And then the peace of God, you know, whatever the enemy was trying to get me to think on. You know, God comes in and is like, Don't, this is not you doing this on your own. This is a work of me, the work of the Holy Spirit in you that enables you and empowers you to live this life in Christ. So, um, thank God. <laughs> Proverbs 21, 5, that's for all of us that are in the Lord born again. Okay, Proverbs 21, 5, the thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteous, but of everyone that is hasty only to want. Okay, so not being hasty, help us more. Okay, let's go here. What is this here? Oh, yeah, 23. What is this? Okay. Alrighty. Thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenty. Okay, so even our thoughts, the thoughts of the diligent. And only to plenty, but everyone that is hasty only to want. I want to um, do some more research on that verse. I'm putting a star next to it. Um, <clears throat> okay. Mm -hmm. Something popped up on the screen, and I'm not going to click it because. Something tell me is going to try to lead me to something else. I don't know what it's going to on this computer. So, um, let me see. Proverbs um, 23, 1 through 3. Okay. One second. Okay. Um, Give me a minute because I gotta come out of here. 
Okay. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. So Proverbs 23, 1 through 3. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee, and put a knife to thy throat if thou be a man given to appetite. Be, the not, be not desirous of dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Wow. So be diligent what is before thee. Right? So we should really consider diligently, like really think about what is presented before me. Wow. Okay. So that's when anything is given. I, I will not only take it for food, but anything. Like, okay, God, what is this? Where is this coming from? Um, I don't even care who who it is. Just where is it coming from, right? Um, so yeah, I can see that it up to needs to apply to other areas of my life, not only just food. Proverbs twenty seven, twenty three through twenty seven. Twenty three through twenty seven. Uh oh, uh, one second. Okay. 20, Proverbs 27, 23 through 27. Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks and look well to thy herds. For riches are not forever, and doth the crown endure to every generation. Nor for riches are not forever, and doth the crown endure to every generation. They, the hay appeareth, and the tender grass show it itself. And herbs of the mountains are gathered. The lambs are for thy clothing, and the goats are the price of the field. And thou shalt have goats milk enough for thy foods, for the food of thy household, and for the maintenance for thy maidens. So, like, really paying attention to our affairs. Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks, and look well to thy herds. That makes me think, like, I don't have any, you know, any, um, a farm or whatever, but, um... You know, and again, you can look that up more, read into that more. But I I see it, what's on my heart is tending to my affairs, financially, investments, you know. Um, yeah, because as, even as you read on, you can see that this, these flocks are, um, it's provision, right? So this has to do with provision. Um, but be diligent to know the state of thy flocks and look well to thy herds. Be diligent to know thy affairs. Right, um, makes me think about um, not like being wasteful, being mindful of what I invest in, where I get my money, you know, what I do, what I buy. Yeah, um, makes me think of budgeting, budgeting wisely. So, okay, Zechariah twelve through fifteen, and like I said, to do more study. I'm just having a, a blessed time. Um, thank God, reading the verses and being built up in the Lord and um, sharing. So, thank God for his word. Um, I remember one time, this is a little um, sidebar. Um, and what was it? Um, the Bible American Society, if I'm saying it correctly. I remember one time... They did a read-a-thon, and it was such a blessing to read the Bible from beginning to from the beginning to the end. It wasn't a teaching; it was just reading. It was just to sit, have different churches come out or people come out and read parts of the Bible from start from the beginning to end, and they stayed out there all day. And um, I remember the church I was attending at the time. We signed up and. Um, people from our congregation, you know, read. And um, it was just a continuous flow. So when it was your turn, you just picked up where the person left off and you read for a certain amount of time. I forgot how much time it was or if it was a certain amount of chapters, but it was just, we were standing outside and people were just walking by downtown and we were just reading the word, reading the word. No, no expounding, letting the Holy Spirit just minister to people, you know, because it wasn't, um, for teaching and really for preaching, it was to read. So it was like a readathon, and um, I remember <clears throat> someone else was sharing how it was this um, it was um at work or something they were going to, and um, 
every day that people will go and they will just read. They will just read the Bible. Everybody will just sit around and just take turns and they will just read and read and read prayerfully and I was like, ooh, and I, lo I love stuff like that. You know, yeah, there are times for the teaching and the preaching, and we need all that, and we need the studying, you know. And sometimes you could just put on a word and just listen to it. You could just read and read and read and ask the Holy Spirit to minister to you. And um, he will. He he really, he truly, truly will. And, um, you know, the Lord say, okay, stop. I want you to study that. Go deeper with that. Read the whole chapter for that verse. You know, but don't think that if you just can't always do an in-depth study that you should not read. That is such a lie straight from the pit. Like, I don't, you know, I mean, don't go, don't take things out of context. Ask God, like, okay, Lord, you know, what is this saying here? Where do I need to go? What verses for the references or whatever? But you can sit down and read the book of Proverbs. And then maybe you're studying another book. I know there's one book I'm studying and in depth and writing things down and letting the Lord lead me to different verses and then there's then then I also just read in addition to right and then I do Bible journal and then I do scripture writing challenges there's so many activities to do with the to do with the Bible and get built up in the spirit and edified so be encouraged so that was on my heart to share Zechariah 6 12 through 15 and speak unto him, saying, Thus speak up the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold a man whose name is the branch, and he, shall, and he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord, and he shall bear the glory, and shall sit and rule upon his throne, and he shall be a priest upon his throne, and the council of peace shall be between them both, and the crown shall be to Helam and to the Tobiah and to Jediah, and to Hen the son of Zephaniah, for a memorial in the temple of the Lord. And they that are far off shall come and build in the temple of the Lord. And ye shall know that the Lord of hosts have sent me unto you. And this shall come to pass if you will diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. That is definitely textual, contextual. So you would, I'm going to put the star. You want to be, know the, who is speaking here, right? Um, Yeah, so something like the verse like this, definitely. Because, you know, I don't know what's really going on there. But one thing, I did get something out of it. If you obey God's voice, the things that God promised is going to come to pass, right? And Because um, we're not isolated from what God wants to do with us. We don't just, you know, some things, yeah, God manifests as a miracle. But sometimes he tells us to take a step of faith, right? So, but again, yeah, this is contextual. I'm sorry, y'all, excuse me. Okay, next verse, Romans 12, 4 through 8. Romans 12, 4 through, Romans 12, 4 through 8. Okay, so it reads, For as we have many members in one body, and all, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another, having then gift is differing according to the grace that is given to us. Whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorted on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Amen. Rule with diligence. Hmm. I'm going to put this to that one. And then there's nine through thirteen. Rule with diligence. Next, please. 
Hmm. I see diligence all through there, though. I have to pour, John. Okay, I'm gonna just let it put in the thing with pour. Okay. All right, I have to pour, so I don't know. Some kind of little mess in the pour. I need to know why. I need to just stop running this little pour. Okay, Romans 12, 9 through 13. Let love be without dissimulation and abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Okay, God. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, giving to hospitality. Yeah, there's diligence all through there. All through there. Not slothful in business, fervent in prayer, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Oh, okay. So, all right, Lord. Um, 2 Corinthians 7, 8 through 12. 2 Corinthians, yes, Lord, 7, 8 through 12. Okay. For though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent. Though I did repent. For I perceive that the same epistle have made you sorry, though it were but for a season. Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that ye sorrow to repentance. For you were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. For behold this selfsame thing, that ye sorrowed after a godly sort. What carefulness it wrought in you, yea, what clearing of yourselves, yea, what indignation, yea, what fear, yea, what vehement desire, yea, what zeal, yea, what revenge. In all things ye have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. Wherefore, though I wrote unto you, I did it not for his cause that had done the wrong, nor for his cause that suffer wrong, but that our care for you in the sight of God might appear unto you. I would say read that entire chapter to understand what is really going on in. Right? And then it goes on that same, then it's do the, um, okay, no. It's um, 2 Corinthians 8. It's no longer just 7, 8. Right? I would say read that whole thing. That whole chapter, and you may have to even go beyond that. This is Second Corinthians eight sixteen through twenty two. But thanks be to God, which put it the same earnest care into the heart of Titus for you. For indeed he accepted the exhortation, but being moved forward of his own accord, he went unto you. We have set with him the brother whose praise is in the gospel throughout all the churches. And not that only, but who was also chosen of the churches to travel with us with this grace, which is administered by us to the glory of the same Lord and declaration of your ready mind. Avoiding this, that no man should blame us in this abundance which is administered by us. 
providing for honest things, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. And we have set with them our brother, whom we have oftentimes proved diligent in many things, but now much more diligent upon the great confidence which I have in you. I would say read the entire chapter in Gami, even lead you to read beyond. First Timothy five nine through ten. Let not a widow be taken into the number under three score years old, having been the wife of one man. Well reported of for good works, if she have brought up her children, if she have lodged strangers, if she have washed the saints' feet, if she have relieved the afflicted, if she have diligently followed every good work. Mm. You will have to read the whole thing of First Timothy 5. I've read that, so I have some understanding of it, but I'm not going to expound on that. But again, we see the importance of God's heart speaking, the Holy Spirit speaking through, Tim, um, through Paul right now, because I believe he's the one that wrote the book of Timothy, about just diligent, dil this whole thing of diligence, diligently followed every good work. God wants us to be diligent, diligent. Yes, Lord, diligent. Seek him diligently. He's a rewarder of those that seek him diligently. So let's read 1 Timothy 2. No, this is 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 2, 14 through 19. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And their word will eat as doth a canker of whom Hymenaeus and Philetus, whose concern in the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. Never nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord know them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Hmm. That is a powerful verse. That is a powerful verse. That is a powerful verse. That 19. Hmm. Alrighty. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews. That has a lot to do with um, diligence too. Hebrews. Hebrews four nine through thirteen. Okay. There Hebrews four nine through thirteen. There remained therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works as God did from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, passing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. For all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Hmm. Hmm. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. 
You can read all of Hebrews 4 and even beyond as the Lord leads you. Before and beyond. Hebrews. Oh, all right, wait a minute. I wasn't supposed to. That was, that was 414 through 16. Okay. Hebrews 6, 9 through 12. Did I just read that one? Did I read that one? Hebrews 11, 6. Okay. For who, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that come up to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Yes, we must believe that, right? That he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hmm. Hebrews 12, 14 through 17. All right, Jesus. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness bring it up, trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sorted carefully with tears. Mm. Mm. First Peter one. First Peter. One thirteen to sixteen. Hmm. Well, we first Peter one thirteen to sixteen. Wherefore, gird up the noise of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which have called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Second Peter. One, five through eleven. And besides this, you can read before if you you know read before Second Peter one. I'm starting at verse five. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience. And to patience, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, rather, wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Last but not least, and I'm sure not exhaustive, 
plenty more scriptures on diligence. But on this list here, it's 31. And it's 31 days. Um, 2 Peter 3, 14 through 18. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, have written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, and which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also be led away with the error of the wicked, for from your own steadfastness. But grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Right. So, with that being said, some of the verses, as you can see, we clearly need to go back and read the chapter, and, you know, before and after as the Lord lead us, um, do some cross-references so we can get understanding of what the verses are saying. Um, um, one thing I did get out of it overall is that to be diligent to seek the Lord, be diligent to keep his ways, be diligent to 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 work and to you know to do overall I get it to do is what God says because God is leading me in every area of my life. He leads us in every area of our life. So to be diligent, to be persistent, to be constant, to be tenacious, even with opposition, just to keep going forward, um, doing as God says do, um, no matter what, when it's with ease or even when it's with opposition. And um, for me, and I believe to anyone that's seeking the Lord that understands that we cannot do this walking in of ourselves, it's comforting to, comforting to know that we don't have to do this in our own strength. We have the Holy Spirit to help us be diligent, to help us kept, keep pressing forward, you know, um, pressing forward into God. You know, as Paul said, he hasn't, he doesn't count himself to have apprehended, but he pressed forth to, you know, apprehend that which he is apprehended of by God. Like, God helps me to press forth, you know, what's that scripture? Um, I don't want to um, say it more. Hold on. Um, yeah, press on toward the goal. Brothers, I do not consider myself to lay hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting that which is behind and straining towards which is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize of God's heavenly calling in Christ Jesus. That is the Berean Study Bible version, but I'm gonna I'm gonna read that in um the King James Proverbs three. I'm gonna read that. Proverbs, that was Proverbs 3, 13, let me go to Proverbs 3, not Proverbs 3, Philippians 3, sorry. Okay. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, um, Not as though from verse 12 he wrote, wait one second. You can read that whole chapter to get even a better understanding. Okay, but brethren, I count from verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, 
But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Just pressing forward, right? You know, and God will help us to be diligent to, again, seek Him. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. All these things will be added unto us. So to seek Him first. Seek the kingdom of God. Um, and to know that we will be rewarded for it. Because He wants us to believe that. And, um, Diligent to do all that he says to do. And um, he's with us. We don't have to do it on our own. And um, I say that so much. And I know I've said it over and over again so much. Because it's like I need to remember that. That needs to be way deep down on the inside. Because if not, it, it could just feel like despair. And like so hopeless. Like. You know, um, especially when you are faced with opposition, you know, Jesus is our hope. So in that, the fact that the comforter, the Holy Spirit is with us to help us. I don't know that, believe me, that does, that, that, that just does it for me. Like, okay, God is in me. He's empowered me. The Holy Spirit is empowered me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's how I can be diligent. And also, I've seen God help me be diligent. Not, I'm not perfect, but I know I'm sure not where I was <laughs> um, years ago or even a month ago or even a week ago. We can see if we love the hand of God in our lives, helping us to be diligent, helping us to get better and better, maturing in Christ, get, becoming more like Jesus, even in the midst of everything, or the up the mountains and the valleys, the mountains and the valleys, we see the hand of God. We see his blessing upon our life. So with that being said, I pray that bless you again, not to take things out of context and to get deeper understanding of God's word. Um, you know, I'm going to try to leave the link to this, this um, plan in the description section. So if you want to go over the scriptures again and, you know, read the, the chapters of it to get the... The, the context so we won't take these things out of context and like um leading people astray because that is definitely not what we want to do at all um and taking things out of context god will help us so yeah i'll leave the link and you can do some deeper study and some further study on your own i'm going to do some further studying studying as the lord leads me on the verses that he tells me to look deeper into. So with that being said, I want to say thanks for watching. God bless you. And remember, Jesus loves you. Bye-bye.